Hey guys, today I'm gonna to go through how to edit YouTube videos with DaVinci Resolve 15. So I've been doing a little bit of video editing freelancing for a popular YouTube channel. It's pretty easy and could be an easy Fiverr gig if you wanted to make a little bit of extra money online. And I use a product called DaVinci Resolve 15 because it's a professional video editing software suite and it's very comparable to Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I started to use Premiere Pro and it was okay for software, but the price is way too expensive for when you're just starting off with a new YouTube channel. So I recommend uh, having a look at DaVinci Resolve 15. I'll put the link down below. It's actually improved a lot over the last few versions. And as I said, it's gonna give you everything Adobe Premiere Pro does, but here's the kicker. It's free. Yeah, that's right. So you can get the beta edition effectively for free. You can go ahead and buy the studio edition if you like, but uh, that's only for high-end uh, collaboration type businesses. So go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve and you can follow along with this video. So I'm in the editing suite now. I've gone ahead and done a little bit of the work already. So when you're doing video editing, and this one is for a crafting channel, you wanna keep the cuts fairly tight because people lose attention. Now, I've gone ahead and made plenty of cuts in here. I've actually gone through and sped this section up here. So let's just have a look here. So we just right click and go change clip speed. Now, this was set to 150 because I increased the pace, but for the speed, I went up to say 250%. And then just go hit change and it speeds it up. Now we go through here and we can just take out some of the boring bits. So if it gets a little bit too fiddly, uh, you can definitely cut some of this stuff out. So what I would normally do is find a position where it's about to do something, and that looked like that was a great position. So I then go ahead and hit this razor blade, and hit that, and that's a cut tool. So we just go and cut that, and we might just uh, go across to this bit here where she's now pulling it out. So go ahead and we'll just cut this little section out. I just highlight this and hit delete. Now there's hot keys, uh, for this, but I'm not going to go through the full details of DaVinci Resolve today. Maybe in another video if you'd like me to. But as you can see now, um, we're going to start teasing that out. So we just cut out some of this uh, dead space in there. So let's just see what that looks like. And she pulls it out and now it's coming out. So we're going to sort of cut through some of this stuff. So that should be fine. So now we go ahead and everything looks okay here. I think there was another section in here I still needed to edit. So I've got to cut here, and now I just really want to jump to the next step. So that's why I've cut this over to this side here, and we'll just go ahead and hit that ripple cut as well. So now we should see that that is just getting put on there, like that, and the next one pops in like that. Now, as you can see here, the color has changed. We want to go ahead and do something with that. So let's go and head down to the color section and we'll just see what exactly this looks like. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I'd actually already edited some of the color previously, but if we have a look here, we can see this, um, this graph is gonna give us pretty much what we need to know. Usually what I like to do is use this offset. So we bring this right up so it hits the top peak up here. So now that's kind of like the maximum brightness. As you can see, it's, it's even brighter than it was before. And now we use the lift and we actually reduce that and that'll bring a bit of contrast in and we can see that's coming down now. So again, you sort of bring that down to the baseline here, uh, unless you want it a little bit darker. And as you see between the two now, we actually have very similar color tones. We could probably go a little bit darker here just to keep consistency in the video. Now, the other way to do that is actually clicking on these little wheels just puts it back to the defaults. So there's another way to make a quick change if you've got uh, multiple frames in your video. Uh, we go ahead and select the one you wanna change. Then we use the middle mouse button. And when we click on that, it actually picks up the template from the previous clip. So that's another way to do it. But essentially what you want is to get these colors towards the top. So that's basically the red element. And I usually bring that down so that's getting close to the bottom here as well. So it fills out the full spectrum. Okay, so now we'll go back to the edit and we'll just finish this off. 
So that's just finishing uh, placing more things on, but uh, I've sort of skipped a little bit. So what I want to do here is put a transition in. So we'll go ahead over to the video transitions and the cross dissolve is usually a good one to indicate that some time has lapsed. So we'll just pop that on there. And by default, it's actually quite a long transition. So I usually shorten that to about half and we'll just see what that looks like now. So that's just the last one. Maybe we'll make that a little bit longer just to give it more of an effect. And that's the last one there. So after that, then we want another snappy transition. Maybe because that's the last one, we'll actually just clip that out using the razor again and just delete that. And okay, so now we'll just uh, pick it up here, I think. So we'll just cut this out. Okay, so it's an overhead shot. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that as well because that's actually not very good. So here we are now. Let's see what this looks like. Now we'll cut to this. Now we're having a look at it, which is great. And now it's dangling. It's a little bit fast for the, uh, for the viewers there. So let's just now cut to something a little bit more interesting. So we've now got some uh, tree footage here. So we're just gonna pop that there and we'll just cut that out as well. So we're gonna go from here dangling and now straight across to a tree. Actually, we might take the dangling bit out. All right, we might just do the demo showing it and as she drops it, then we're gonna cut straight to this Christmas tree clip. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of a transition as well. Now this is the end of the video, but uh, I want to put this actually at the front. So I'll just um, shrink down the size. I just drag and click the whole thing and I just move it along. I grab this last one. I do a control C for a cut or you can just do a copy that way. And then I do a paste. So we'll come back to this in a minute. So let's just finish off the end screen part here. Okay, so this is how I keep the interest of the viewer. So we're just choosing the last, say, 10 seconds. I've just cut that out and um, we'll just move that up a couple. Now we'll go over to generator and I add a couple of solid colors in here. And I just drag them out to the end. So now I set my cursor at the front here and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down into the corner. So I go ahead and set these timelines and I just drag this forward just ever so slightly. So we might just uh, zoom this in a bit. I usually go for about half a second. So that's probably bad enough. Now we'll go ahead and change this to 0.5 and it'll change the wider 0.5. The position is four, three, four, and the Y is two, two, one. Now you'll see what happens when I click on this now, and we can just see the effect. So it goes into the corner. Now the video is still playing, and what we're using that for is to add the end screens on the side here. So we'll just choose a contrasting color. Uh, we'll go with purple in this case. And now I go ahead and I click this little link in between so I can edit the zoom X and Y individually. And we change that to 0.43 and the Y is 0.91 and the position is 507. That just pushes it across to the side. And this other solid color will just make the background color. So it could be any other contrasting color as well. So we're just gonna go with the blue in this case. Now what actually happens here is the end screens appear in this little section. So these will be here for people to click on new videos, but as you see, the video is still actually playing. So the other thing we wanna do is a call to action. So I usually just come after this zoom in here and I go ahead and add a title and a text. So we'll just drag that down a little bit and we'll just go ahead and add a title in there. So this title is just gonna be a call to action and it's just gonna say subscribe. And we'll go ahead and use the channel's uh, font that they like. And I usually bring this out to 160. Okay, so now we need to move that across. So we position X across and position Y down. 
Now, it wouldn't be YouTube without the classic YouTube red color. So we go down to the background. Uh, we click on this red cell here and we take away all the transparency by making that 100. Now, if we just bring in some height here and we bring the width down, we can see we've now got a subscribe button. So I'll just edit that and bring this to the end as well. And there we go. So that's the end screen effect. And again, we put some videos in there. Okay, before I set the intro, I usually like to add a little bit of music into the video. Now this particular artist uses um, artlist.io. Now the reason why they're using artlist.io instead of Epidemic Sound is because Epidemic Sound starts at $15, but it goes up pretty quickly once you hit a million views per month. So you wanna watch out for that trap. And also the video licensing you have is only cleared for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch. And artlist.io is just one price. And basically you can use it for any commercial project and it's a lifetime use for the song you download. So it's a $16.60 per month, but uh, as soon as you go over 1 million views per month, it's a lot cheaper than Epidemic Sound. And as I say, Epidemic Sound is limited to only a few platforms. And right now you're also getting 50 free special effects with your Artlist subscription. So you wanna get onto that pretty quickly. I'm gonna put a, a link down below and uh, go ahead and join Artlist. They also have a one month trial as well. So we'll go back to the video. So this is the song I've chosen. And what I wanna do is actually stop this on an actual beat. So we've got a nice transition. So that would be the ideal there. So we can drag this right out and we'll just uh, transition it here. So we'll just click on this little dead space and hit delete. And that just cuts it out. So we're gonna transition just here, right? So rather than just have a, a jump cut, let's go ahead and hit the video transitions. And we'll do a, we'll go down to push and we'll push one in here like that. So that's just gonna slide it across. Now, there's one other thing we wanna do in this little section here, is add a call to action for a shopping list. So we're gonna go ahead and hit another title, and we'll just select a basic title text like that. And we'll just bring this across like that. So we just wanna add the word shopping list below. And we're just gonna change it to the channel's font. Um, I bring this down to about 80 in size. Now we wanna just have this uh, popping in at the top. So I'll just drag this across here to start with so we can get a bit of a feel for it. And then we go and scroll down to background. We wanna add a little bit of a background here. And the other thing, we want the opacity to be 100%. And we'll just use a contrasting color here. So we'll go with the purple. Now, the other thing I like to do is bring this uh, edge in here. So we just hit the center X and we just drag that across a little bit. So it's right on the edge. Uh, the reason why we've done that is because you see, uh, we can just sort of come out without us actually seeing the other curve part here. So it looks like that to start with. Let's go to the front of our text image and we'll go ahead and hit position. Now we're there, let's just move this off screen. So now we're just gonna hit this timeline transition and we're just gonna scroll forward just a few little seconds here and we just hit it again. And now we just move this position across to where we want it to end. So it's just like this. And now if we play it, it just slides in like that. Now we also want it to slide out. So we'll hit this again and then we move it forward just a few frames. Now, if you can't uh, get it to where you wanna be, just zoom out a little bit. And now we just zoom that back out. So the effect now is, and that just stays on for a little bit, zips off, and now we get into the actual craft. So let's go ahead and put another transition in here, and we'll just do another push. And we'll just make it a little bit quicker. 
by dragging it in. All right, so that's the effect. Sometimes uh, we just make that a bit quicker because the craft has already started. Now, there's only one other thing uh, that we like to do now uh, with videos because uh, when people copy your videos, it's not much fun. So we go ahead and put a watermark in there. Uh, I usually zoom that down to 0.17 and then we just drag this across to the side. So the idea with the watermark is not so it's uh, in your face, but if someone copies a video, it's going to be pretty obvious whose video it is. And the other thing, if you make it uh, big enough, they're also going to be able to, they're going to find it hard to zoom it out because you're not going to get the quality that you require. So let's have a look at this uh, final transition here. It zooms out. All right, so that's the end of the video, but uh, we've actually got um, some music to go. So let's just cut that out here and we'll just delete that. Now I also bring the volume of the music down because it was actually quite high. So I usually bring it, bring it down to about point minus six. Now we just want to tail off this uh, music. So let's go ahead and do that with an audio transition crossfade, drag that in and probably about halfway. And there it is. That's the whole video edited. Now, if you've got any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this on DaVinci Resolve, and the more YouTubers that know that DaVinci Resolve 15 is actually free, and it's a high quality video editing suite, because quite frankly, Adobe Premiere Pro's pricing is just too high for new YouTube creators. Oh, so, and finally with the video, you just want to go ahead and hit deliver. You click on YouTube and choose the format you want. So I'm just doing 1080p. I go to QuickTime and make sure that's MP4. Codec is H.264. I add that to my render queue. I select the folder. And then we just go ahead and start render. So that's going to go ahead and render this video. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, the more powerful PC you've got, the better. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, it's bye for now.